Hey, what is up, guys? This is Cole. Welcome to some tournament gameplay submitted by Mr. Uncle Lazy playing as Red, who just, by the way, questionably, decides to spend his starting supply on an extra pack of Stangs, but we're going into three packs of Hackies, man. I don't know about this, dude. I don't know about this, and oh. Honestly, Blue gets like the perfect connection with the crawlers just pushing in front of the arc lights as the Mustangs come into range and the Maxman come into range. And so none okay, one of the arc lights goes down, but besides that, the Akis make absolute butcher's work of the poor stangs and oh god. It's a rough start, man. Uncle Lazy, he's panicking, he's sweating. He's going into convulsions. He's only got one shot, one opportunity to pick extended range sledgehammer. <laughs> Even though he's got no sledgehammers on the field. Wonder if we'll see senior manufacturing specialist? With this being a tournament game, you know what I'm saying? Subsidized R key. That's actually skipped by Blue, which is quite interesting. Blue has the option here of going, oh wow, Lazy actually went extended range sledgy. And is going to drop some sledgies right away by the looks of it. There they are. Desperately needs a little bit more chaff here though. Back lines, maybe even in front of the tower slightly. Ooh, I definitely put some crawlers there where I played as red. But we'll check up on him in a second. Yeah, I'm a bit surprised that uh, blue didn't go subsidized acolyte and just kind of drop. Hang on, wait, what? Never mind. Forget everything I just said. Blue is not running acolyte range, which is quite peculiar. Yeah, if you get really, really early subsidized acolyte and you already have some on the field. Then I feel like just dropping like six of them, like really, really early on and picking up extended range basically covers you for chaff killers until like round six or something, you know, until you have to worry about like, I don't know, fangs with portable shield, you know, that kind of thing, right? It just covers your, it, it just covers your behind for a long time. Anyways, we do see some extra crawlers come down from red, which I think were placed all the way in the back over here. It looks like they're going to make a very, very big difference on this side. This side, on the other hand getting a little bit panned. So let's speed this up. It looks like Red might actually have the numbers to get this done. With these Phoenixes getting distracted by these guys. Opens the dough for the Maxmen to do what they gotta do. And would you look at that man, Uncle Lazy making the comeback. Which is, by the way, the theme of this one. It's the theme of this video. Ooh, triple Rhino drop. Double, I mean the Vulcan drop. Okay, never mind. Both players go Wraith. Okay. Surely that's a bit questionable for Blue. I kind of feel like Vulcans. Um, like, like just grabbing the Vulcan, getting the free unlock on a giant unit. Yeah, he's playing Supply Specialist on Blue as well, so he doesn't get free giant unlocks. I feel like the Vulcan would have been much, much better for Blue. Who also, by the way, yeah, when, when did the armor enhancement? I'm not sure how I feel about that either. To be honest, like it's only countering the stangs. And it's not like it's not like we're expecting red to triple down on the stangs, man, after how the first round went, so it's a bit questionable. Anyways, we see not just one Wraith actually, but a second Wraith follow-up. Comes out from red. Which I don't know, man. The Wraith wasn't the obvious choice to me, not gonna lie. I feel like it's a bit better for red. Because he's up against like a lot lot more chaff, right? A lot more crawlers, and he has like no reliable chaff killers right now. And so the Wraiths can kind of do the job as long as you can keep them safe with your crawler units. But oh, these Phoenixes have actually latched over here on this guy. Damn. And it's real close, but he is gonna drop. Sucks a little. And for how close this round actually is, it looks like it might end up being a bit more one-sided on the score sheet than the actual combat suggested for a moment there, but. Oy, oy, oy. Yeah, I don't know, man. For blue, though, I feel like... Ah, I don't know. I just feel like the Vulcan was, was just a better pickup. If you're not going to go, like, the range, chaff-clearing, arc light style, then you're going to need a Vulcan to do it later, right? Sooner rather than later as well. But okay. Nano Repair Kit comes out for blue. And that's going to go on the Wraith, as you can see there. But I'm more curious as to see another Nano Repair Kit comes out. So I'm guessing that's also going to go here, right? Wonder if it's time to... Ooh, we're going to start selling off the Stangs. That's big brain. I like that. I like that a lot, especially because Blue actually just picked up Armor Enhancement as well on the Wraiths, which Blue seems really, really trigger-happy, man, with the ar uh, Armor Enhancements. Quite questionable, dude. Especially because the counter to Wraith is not Stangs. 
The counter is the maximum with aerial special, right? Now, I wonder if we'll see Red push the button on that just yet. Or maybe if we're just going to see more chaff come down. He has one more buy available. I feel like Crawler, Aerial Special, is totally fine here. You already know your opponent's gone one Wraith. You already know they have two Phoenixes. I feel like you might as well just get this dialed in. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> and down comes the Vulcan. All right, man. Vulcan comes out. Okay, dude. Hmm. I suppose the alternative to the Vulcan would just be more crawlers and range on the wraiths. You know, so the wraiths stay behind um, a never-ending crawler wave. And the wraiths uh, sort of act as your chaff clear. That's like another way to go about it. The Vulcan I do like. I mean, there's a lot of crawlers on the field. Gotta get this acolyte dead, though. That's actually quite important. Oh, never mind. The wraith is dealing with the crawlers as well. Yeah, I feel like there's just a little bit of unit overlap, a little bit of, like, unit roll overlap on both sides. I feel like the Vulcan and the Wraiths are functionally, on this board, doing quite similar things. We actually got the Nano Repair Kit on the Vulcan, by the way. So it's going to have a little bit of stability, but the fire is going to get stuck hitting the Arclight forever. Um, so yeah, I feel like there's a bit of overlap on red, and I feel like the Arclights and the Wraiths are also doing a similar thing. Uh, for blue. Okay, um... Advanced Fireball Control. Senior Attack. Ooh, Blue goes Senior Attack and Red just outright skips. Okay. Alright. Ooh, we're actually selling on the Sledgehammers now. I think that's actually somewhat wise. I think that does make some sense. But yeah, I, I, I really think if I were Red, I'd be mass recruiting and I'd be just flooding crawlers everywhere. Uh, would be my first... Course of action. Crawlers everywhere and range on the wraiths with the current bolt state. I feel like would make a pretty damn good difference. Yeah, I feel, I feel like that's what I do, man. Me, personally. The Phoenixes? Ooh, by the way, Phoenixes straight into Electromag as well. So we're just looking to disable the armor on the wraiths. We're also looking to disable armor and snipe down the Arclights, which also makes sense. Do we have Electromag on the Maxman? We do not. Okay. Alrighty. Shield comes out. Missile comes out. Let's see, man. I like the little crawler wiggles we've got going on. It's gonna basically completely negate the opening salvos of a few of the missiles. The wraiths over on this side. This time make very, very short work of the Acolyte over here. Freeing up the Vulcan to hit all kinds of other better targets. Which is exactly what you want to see. Phoenix has also dropped the Wraith as well. Electromag actually coming in quite clutch, slowing the crap out of it. These guys, though, with plus range, are eventually still just going to snipe us down. Yeah, we've got to start matching him on range a little bit. Feels like he's just outranging us by quite a bit. Ah. Okay. Well, there it is, boys. This unit card right here, resulting in this, it's like, I swear to God, and this, like exactly what we're seeing right now, Elite Maximum, right? It's going to come out for blue as well. This feels like one of the biggest problems of the uh, existing patch. This exact little combo right here. You know what I'm saying? What on earth is going on for blue? Why is there a war factory there? Efficient maintenance. He's just getting it online while he's ahead. I actually like that. That's quite smart. Like, even if you lose the next round, is blue now. Ooh, Blue actually doesn't have the cash now, though, to buy Elite Maxman. Which is a bit questionable. Um, but yeah, when you're, like, super, super far ahead like this, I feel like... Just making an economy player like this, get the War Factory on the field. This is pretty smart and quite hard to come back from. Uh, if you're the red player now. Because you can't kill him in, like, two rounds. Or, like, it's very, very unlikely, right? There's you the cell on the Sledgehammers... Aerial Specialist now comes out on the Maxman, which I like a lot. I think that's sweet. I'm always a bit skeptical when you see Phoenixes and Maxman with uh, tech upgrades on the same team. I feel like one or the other is usually the path. Like, what are Phoenixes if not flying Maxman? You know what I'm saying? Like, they're just kind of airborne Maxman, right? Okay. 
Wraith honestly getting quite a bit done. Like, virtually all the chaff is dead by the time the Wraith goes down. And as long as these wasps are on the field, nothing is safe. They will eventually pew pew this thing down long before this phoenix can deal with them. Oh, there's actually two more phoenixes here too. I think they're just going to annihilate those two though, right? Ooh, they're losing numbers. Now nah, they're not going to get to connect quite quickly enough. With the building dying, it just ain't going to be enough. Bro, those wasps nearly solo carried, man. We're down at 290 health now. Let's get a little bit sketched, dude. Lightning Storm. Electromag. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw a Lightning Storm here come out. Uh, for both players, honestly. Ooh, it's actually skipped from blue. Alright. What are Blue's plans are with those uh, War Factories? What do we got going on over here? We've got some more levels coming out on the Marksman. That'll make sense. We still have a big lack of chaff, man, on, on red side. But this is the thing, man. If you don't get the chaff online early, like early on in the game, in the first like three or four rounds, by the time it gets to like now, like round seven, you need to have big turns where you're buying big units, getting big upgrades and blah, 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 you know? It feels kind of weird. To spend like 300 supply buying a few packs of crawlers, you know? Feels kind of old, it feels kind of off, it feels a bit too late in the game to be doing that, but... It could be a big damn problem to be chaff starved later on in the game. We actually only have two packs of crawlers, by the way. So it really is quite a chaff deficient board that we're looking at here. Alright. God, can I just say as well, this does not look like a round 7 board. <laughs> like, where's the units, you know? Here, yeah, we actually be flanking in with these guys. I like that. The lightning storm is big. It's going to cleave the crap out of most of the wasps. Can we get a hit on these guys? Sadly not. So blue's uh, super strong wasps at least are going to make it through. But alright. It ain't going to matter, dude. Nice. Building dying super, super fast is nice. The wasps on this flank are going to get in and get their job done. The war factory is going to absolutely melt. Which, by the way, it's a Phoenix production war factory here. So I'm guessing we're going to see... More Phoenix techs come out next round as well. Phoenix rebirth, maybe? For blue? Problem is, blue has to deal with the wasps now. I mean, to be fair, in retrospect, probably should have got some Mustangs on the field last round. Um, God, what's actually good here? Well, Blue thinks the Rhinos. I kind of feel like the Fortresses, uh, the Fortress is just fine for Red. Okay. Are these going to be some Acid Scorpions? That will probably be the next option, but it's quite expensive. Ah, oh, he is actually just going to do it. Straight into acid range scorpions, something to just melt the war factories. And honestly, they'll do a pretty damn good job against the rhinos as well. Gotta be said, by the way, red is, uh, sorry, blue here is very, very, very central uh, in his formation, the way he set up his guys. I almost feel like just plopping like a flanking Vulcan, like right here, will be totally fine. Pull these guys away, pull these guys away, torch them all. Suddenly there's no chaff really on this side to keep these guys safe. And it's just a free win over there, you know? But yeah, this guy is super, super compact. Okay, man. We're going to borrow extra cash. We actually picked up a set, uh, sorry, a third scorpion here as well. And all right. Let's see if the scorpions have the desired effect. Somehow these wasps are actually not answered on this flank. Which makes no sense at all. Every round, by the way, is a must-win now. For Uncle Lazy. The Wraith is just making it in, though. Look at this, dude. Now, here comes the Scorpion to absolutely dunk on the War Factory. There it is. The Acid Lands, as soon as that happens, it's just absolute evisceration. Building goes down. That's going to make all the difference in the world. Suddenly, this Phoenix looks very, very unlikely to die. Unless the Phoenix is able to take care of it just now. And there it is, dude. And now look at the wasps go, dude. These wasps are actually farming XP. And if you're Dire Avenger now, if you're blue, you're panicking, dude. You're starting to sweat. Okay. 
I still use Wraith, Laser Sights. I mean, Laser Sights too good. That's too good. There it is, man. Look at the range on these absolute units over here, man. We're talking mental range. And at that, by the way, I think that's actually just GG. Because the answer to this would normally just be, okay, it's fine. Like, like the game's going a bit, like, it's it's all a bit sad. I feel like we could maybe just drop some crawlers here, by the way, and distract the uh, scorpions and just do the same thing as uh, Red is doing. If you're blue right now, run some uh, crawlers back and forth to distract the scorps. I think it'd be totally fine. Um, but normally the answer would be, like, stangs here, stangs here, aerial specialization, right? Maybe explosive ammo, too, while you're at it. Um... But yeah, now these wasps nearly have like 200 meter range. <laughs> and so, unless you very, very heavily win the chaff battle and your stangs actually get to connect on these guys, which right now looks super, super unlikely. I also feel like red could benefit from more Vulcans, by the way. Having incendiary bomb on only one Vulcan feels a little bit, a little bit questionable. Like you really want like a Vulcan here and a Vulcan here as well, right? Really give your opponents something to think about. Ooh. Missile Interceptor was picked up on the War Factories, dude. So they're actually going to shoot down most of the incendiary bombs, right? Oh, never mind. A lot of them get to land. It's pretty good positioning. Either way, man, look at these goddamn wasps. They're so far back, dude. They're so safe right now. And the damage they're doing is just ungodly. I mean, look at the rhinos. What rhinos? Exactly. Gone. I didn't even notice that those 5 cost rhinos exist. I think that blue's best bet would have been to just buy the rhinos and sell them. To be honest... Ooh, these wasps need to stop hitting chaff, though. Start hitting bigger things. As they absolutely eviscerate the war factory in, like, one shot. Wasps go down. Uh, sorry, yeah, phoenixes go down. They're gonna dink the building from Afghanistan in just a second. Even with the building dead. Can they actually do this? The war factory's driving through acid. They just outrange the phoenixes for the most part. One of them gets the building kill, which is huge. And, oh my goodness. Four wasps are gonna pull this off. Look at them one-shot the tanks, by the way. Uh, sorry, uh, those are actually stormies. <laughs> and, like, I know they're in the acid, but it still looks hilarious. Ooh. Can they save the barrier? No. All right, man. It goes on. Dire Avenger is thinking, what the hell do I have to do, man, to bug spray these wasps? This is getting ridiculous. He's got to go. He didn't go electromag. Did Blue. He could have went the damn thunderstorm, dude. Drop thunderstorm right here. Just guarantee the kill on these guys. These guys are by far his biggest problem, and they're no doubt going to get more upgrades just now. Uh, get them up to level nine. Nice. The extra Vulcans do come down. Hey, man, dude. I like this, dude. I love it when I like call out what I would do, what I feel like the army needs, and then like the next turn, uh, the person who I'm spectating does it. You know, it's kind of cool, man. Makes me feel like we're in a similar wavelength. Would have been nice to have these up a little bit sooner, but you know what, man? They're here now. That's all that matters. Especially because now we have the portable shields up on the fangs. We're going to need those flaming mechanics. We're going to need those incendiary bombs to land. The war factories are just a bit too far back to actually shoot these uh, incendiary bombs down, which is a big problem. We do see these max level wasps come up now, which is just glorious. 212 meter range. They've got the range enhancement. They've got the goddamn high mobility button. They are ready to slay everything. I almost want to spectate from their point of view. Oh god, no I don't. Let's not do that. Okay, so they're gonna get EMP'd. Which is gonna badly nerf their range. It actually cuts their range in half, dude. That's how strong that EMP is. But that's not gonna last forever. They just have to live one round. Ooh, these guys are pushing quite a bit far ahead here, dude. This is not great. They're gonna get the building down real quick. If this is gonna work out. Couple of shots, one more shot, there it is. Okay, we have a little cluster of them still left alive here. Couple of them here. Oh my god, it's just a slaughter, actually. Just an absolute massacre. What are we even, what are we even casting about the wasp for, man? The rest of the army got the job done. Hey, well played, man, lazy, for keeping your head. Good stuff. And yeah, I hope that some of my feedback at least was maybe a little bit useful. Especially the chaff thing. Oh god, it's so weird to see around 10 and like... Two packs of crawlers <laughs> is the only chaff that's on the field, you know? Oi, 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 oi. Respect the chaff, boys.
And alright man, the next absolute comeback fiesta is supplied to us by Mr. Kryofi, who's playing as Blue Man, some heavy armor specialist starting off with sledgehammers. I like this man. Dude, look how slow these sledgehammers look. Oh god. I tell you what, it's just because I've come off of the back of watching the uh super speedy sledgehammers video. <laughs> <laughs> like before recording this one, better recording a couple tonight, you know? And oh my god, these guys look so slow compared to the other stages we watched uh, in the last one, man. But hey, check it out. Gonna absolutely eviscerate this opening round. Tight, 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 tight. Now, there's a couple of things I do want to see from Kuriofi here going into this round. Some position uh, positioning stuff here that we gotta raise. The Maxmen are a pretty safe bet being ranked to. Ooh, we actually go for the Stangs. Okay. Me personally, I think I would have went for Maxman. Like, Maxman, Maxman. Protect them that way. And we go for Stangs. Okay, so what I would have probably done here instead is look to... First of all, I feel like if you're up against Steel Balls, first thing you want to do is place your Sledgehammers in a vertical formation so that they are less likely to get latched on in, like, one B line and all die at the same time to a pack of Sledgehammers like this. Like, if you put Sledgehammers here as red and they just run into the tanks then every tank dies at the same time. Whereas if you put the sledgehammers in a vertical pattern, then only the guy at the front, only one guy, will get latched by the steel balls. Right, and then two, and then maybe another two. But the point is it really, really staggers the progress of the uh, steel balls, right? So that's just a quick little positioning tip. Next thing, I'd be really, really, really scared of sentry missiles here. Just killing off the sledgehammers and, you know, getting them dead really, really quickly and denying them from getting XP. So I would replace chaff and chaff here. Fangs, fangs in front of the uh, sledgehammers, you know. Oh, yo, 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 we got a little bit of flank shenanigans going on, which just turns out the stangs are actually going to be able to take care of, which is really, really nice. Just a consequence of going that uh, triple stang load out. That said, there's just a lot of crawlers still left alive on the field. Sledgehammers not good at killing off so much chaff, and the stangs are going to get stuck hitting a rhino absolutely fruitlessly. And the Rhinos are going to find value, man. Ooh, Red actually went armor enhancement on the Rhinos. That's why the Stangs are basically not even tickling them. And as such, they're going to get utterly eviscerated, even though they do deal with the flanking attempt. Okay, man. Rough, rough, rough. Let's see how this one plays out. We got Speed Special, we got Tech Special. Both of them looking pretty saucy. Tech Specialist it is. Yeah, it's kind of the standard, right? Good stuff. It saves you a lot of money as the game goes on. Um... Ooh, man, how are we want to do this? So, oh wow, we actually go straight into hackers, man. We don't even wait. Don't even wait, man. And move these hackers a little bit further back. If we're not going to cover these tanks uh, with chaff here, then they're very, very vulnerable to missiles. And so if a missile comes in here and hits these tanks, it will also kill the hacker and maybe even the acolyte as well. So I just stagger these back a little bit. Uh, where it may... Also, by default, hackers move slightly faster than sledgehammers. So generally, you want the hacker to be, like, a little bit further back, like so. Like, eventually, if you get techs on the sledgehammer, that won't matter so much. But for right now, again, I'd be so, so worried about a sentry missile coming in from red. And it just happens that red saved 50 supply this round. He decided not to buy the sentry missile. So we're going to get away with it. We're going to lose some stangs over here to the crawlers at the back. Which is a bit sad, but the hackers do get to latch, which is the most important thing. And alas, without the missiles coming out, they should get the steel. And at least be annoying for Red to deal with. Steel balls are going to clean those up kind of nice. But the most important thing is that Blue didn't have to deal with the... Oh god, I think this hack is doomed. Yeah, it doesn't quite get the steel. Oh, that sucks a little bit. Oh wow, what the hell? The steel balls also have energy absorption. I didn't even notice that. I need to be paying more attention to what blue, uh, sorry, to what red's doing as well. I've been focusing almost all um, of my energy on blue side. Buildings drop and jobs are good. Little bit rough. Okay. So strike specialist, amp core. I mean, amplifying core is surely it. How much better, by the way, is amplifying core than improved firepower control? Can I just say? Like, it's, it's leaps and bounds better. Ooh. Ooh, then we got hacker range as well. So that's going to help keep the hackers quite safe. We still really need chaff and chaff, by the way. 
it's becoming like super super crucial at this point we have so many units here now that we've revealed to be in a pack we gotta protect these guys from missiles man that works a little bit again i put these vertical pattern so they're just poking out a little bit more gives you a bit more protection from missile um there's another way to do it if we're only gonna buy one you know what i'm saying given that we did spend so much cash actually on techs on the hackers this round dude this is a big gamble actually this is a big, big gamble that we make in here. Meanwhile, red goes into replicating crawlers. Okay. Yeah, this is worrisome. This is really, really worrisome. I feel like we're going to need... We don't have explosive ammo on the stangs. No, Kriofi, dude. Kriofi. Okay. First thing you should do, dude, after watching this video, is get rid of missile interceptor on your stangs. It's so useless. <laughs> Yeah, high explosive ammo for dealing with uh, crawler swarms and with fang swarms is uh, yeah much, 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 much better than missile interceptor on the stangs. Um, but oh my god, look at this. Are the hackers actually going to pull this off? This is the guy with the amplifying core. If anyone can do it, it's this hacker right here. He gets one steal. Oh, he's going to get latched on, dude. He's not going to get any more. Tried so hard, got so far, but at the end it didn't even matter. And now the crawlers are just going to swarm everything. Okay, also a quick thing I want to point out, because I got annihilated by this recently. Mass hackers can never deal with replicating crawlers. It's just not something that can happen. It's something I tried out. Uh, I think it was like five days ago or something, like, like not too long ago. I was up against someone who was spamming the hell out of crawlers. I knew replicate was coming, and I already had a couple of hackers on the field to deal with steel balls. And so what I did... Ooh, ooh, we're going for the Wraiths to answer this. Oi, oi, oi. But anyways, back to the story. Yeah, mass replicating crawlers. I tried to counter it by spamming the crap out of multiple control hackers. And I was thinking, I'm just going to turn his swarm against him. It's going to be awesome. Yeah, it doesn't go down like that. <laughs> Even if, what, like, if for every one hacker is hacking like five crawlers at a time, the crawler swarm will just kill those five that you've taken instantly instantly every time and it just it just you you can't keep up it's just not possible um so yeah i do fully support the rates coming out i think that that's grand i think it's particularly grand because there is no anti-air at all on red and so yeah the red pickup here i actually really really like they're also going to do a pretty good job of multi-targeting down the crawlers while also roughing up the rhinos for the hackers to get steals on which is kind of big Ooh, sadly this guy has abandoned his post fled for his life got a bit too much denethor action going just leaves this building to get absolutely eviscerated but hey now we just have a couple of ufos beaming down everybody this is really going to take a while in fact they're not actually doing any damage to the riders man or if they are it's such a tiny amount that the health isn't moving which is really quite concerning dude they're going to get a couple steel ball kills and stuff but besides that Oh, God. What a disaster. Oh, man. So even rates, if there's enough tanky targets, even they have target lock problems, man. They do kill off, like, a reasonable amount to reduce the incoming damage. Get a little bit done. Javelin comes out? That's a damn good javelin right there, you know. Blue actually... Sorry, red actually just goes ahead and... Skips out on the jav. Ooh. And so does blue. Goes for floating artillery. I think that's good. I do like that quite a bit. I think that's pretty tight. Honestly, by the way, I think I almost feel like at this point I'd be selling the uh, stangs. I'd be considering selling the stangs. I feel like they're just not really getting a whole lot done. The hackers are somehow still level one, by the way. Like, they look so close to having a massive, massive impact. But they just never quite get it done. Now, the floating artillery array is going to do a hell of a lot for the Wraiths. It's also a level 3 Wraith now. And a level 2. This side looks like it's still going to be a little bit of a wash. A little bit of building health on this side maybe would have done the world a good. Overlords ain't going to wait for no man, though. They're just going to eviscerate everything. And now the damage is getting... Really, really steep. Oh my god. Okay. Oh, would you look at that? Maxman. 
I mean, it's, it's going to either be Maxwin for blue or Wasps if we have aerial specialization on the Wasps, which I would recommend, by the way. I think it's really, really good. Now, exactly for situations like this. And exactly because you can predict that your opponent is also going to come out with Wasps. So I think that this is Maxwin and then go aerial specialization on the Mustangs just in case your opponent is going to go for the Wasps, which I think you have to play around. Um, it just happens that Red actually goes for the War Factory, but... Oh my god! Okay. All right. We go the scorpion route. I mean, all right, dude. I mean, I'm here for it as well. I love some scorpion gameplay. I wonder if we're going to see artillery and acid attack here. Double shot acid attack. Wow. So we're just trying to deal with the rhinos then. We're just trying to deal with the rhinos, right? Oh, no, we give them range as well. Okay, dude. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, you know, it just happens. That blue actually intensive training a war factory as well and built another one. And so he's invested a lot into units that get detonated by scorpions here. Now with the maxman that I suggested be able to deal with this, I actually don't know, man. I actually don't know if they'd have what it takes. But the scorpions, they certainly should. The one worry here is what kills the overlords. You're really just relying on the wraiths getting in and getting that done. They are connecting just now. We have a little pocket of stangs as well that are supporting. And wow, dude, they're actually just going to get it done. And not only that, looks like, oh, nearly get the steel on the war factory. That would have been a hilarious swing. But all right, dude, here we go, man. Blue Titan is screaming. He can't believe it. He's flipping his desk. The marksman, the double wasps come out. Okay, now it's getting serious. Is there any merit to the Vulcan for blue? I don't think so. Fortress is pretty tight. Do we have anti-air missiles? We do. Dude, let this be a giant brain player. You gotta, you gotta expect the wasps to come out eventually. We go for the fist! <laughs> okay, I didn't expect that. Alright, I don't know what the fist does that the scorpions aren't already doing. You know what I mean? Like... I kind of feel like the fist, like the rocket punch, is just a worse scorpion. We already have, like, the scorpions are doing a great job already. We don't have to worry about those guys. Oh, man. I really, really hope that we see the idea of Barrage come out in, the, like, a second fortress. That would have been so cool. Because, I mean, you've got to expect, by the way, your opponent, like, any time this high-level wasps become available, you almost just expect your opponent to go for them at this point because they're so good, especially with Elite Maxman, which, by the way, Red doesn't even have available to go on his wasps. But okay, let's see how much time this uh, this fortress actually buys for us. Oh, the scorpions have an absolute field day against these rhinos, though. That is for sure. The hackers are doing nothing now, by the way. Should also point that out, too, because the scorpions are killing things so quickly. But at the same time, it doesn't make any sense to sell the hackers because we've invested so much tech in them. <laughs> I mean, I still think I'd actually support selling them. And oh, God. We get the steel of the war factory, but it dies to the acid. That's kind of sad. Dude, is this actually over? Hang on. I, there's still four scorpions left alive, man. This is done. And just like that, and two, this is why you don't... Dude, this is why you just don't give in on games, man. Get yourself some Necron tier scorpions on the field, right? Which was like a crazy big brain player, by the way. I'm impressed by that pickup. That was good. Um, The Stangs... Felt a little bit quite, it feels like there were a couple of units here that we could have sold and maybe rejigged a little bit. But all in all, man, GG, dude. It's also a little bit questionable when you see that someone has, hasn't has uh, picked up field recovery, you know? Especially by the time it comes to, like, round eight. Usually there's a good opportunity to sell a unit off uh, by this stage. Honestly, there might have even been a case to be made to pick up the level five fortress and just sell it instantly. Because what was it really going to get done? Like, yeah, I, I had the cute idea of, like, picking up anti-air barrage, but even that would have been a pretty big gamble, right? Um, I almost felt like you could just pick the fortress and then just sell it and just invest in uh, making the rest of your army just total raid bosses. Oi, oi, oi. Anyways, come back central. Hope you all enjoyed this happy little video, boys. Thanks for watching. Hope you all did enjoy. And we're going to catch all of you all just a tad bit later. And actually, before I go... Make sure to submit your own replays in the official Mechavala Discord. Of course, in the Share Your Replay channel over there. It's linked down below. Do it, man. Especially if they're just crazy as hell replays. Good chance to be checked out on this channel. All right.
Cheers, guys.